welcome to this Flow360 online training webinar. Today we're going to be looking at the whole question of categorization lists and some of the things that we've done recently to extend the use of those categorization lists into categorizing help desk issues as and when they come in. We've always had categorization lists in Flow360 and you've been able to use them up until now for categorizing things like resources, so buildings, rooms, uh, objects in rooms, and you've also been able to use them for categorizing things like scheduled tasks, planned, uh, planned actions, and also works activity and things like documents. Uh, and there's a mechanism that you may or may not be aware of that allows you to view the categorization lists that are in Flow360 if you want to explore what's there already. So just to point you in the direction of that, I'm logged in currently as a manager. And if I click on the Preferences button to go to my Preferences as a manager, I have a tab here on my Manager Preferences that's called Category Lists. And if I click on that, uh, I actually have a number of category lists that I can choose from. Some of these, uh, in this case, when I'm looking at the demo now, some of these are categorization lists that I have set up as a manager, but some of them are the built-in Flow360 ones that are based on Omniclass or Uniclass. These are standard industry categorizations, um, or indeed we have a standard occupational classification for classifying and categorizing people's job roles. So for example, if we wanted to have a look at spaces by function, if I wanted to explore this categorization list, if I select spaces by function, I then get a list here of the next level down. So categorization lists are hierarchical. So having chosen, first of all, the Omniclass 13 list, which is spaces by function, I can then drill down, say, into commercial spaces. So if I click on the target next to commercial spaces, I then get banking spaces, buying and selling, trading spaces. And if I click on down into trading spaces, I then get negotiation room, other trading spaces, trading floor, and so on. And as I drill down through the levels, I can go back up a level by clicking on a little up arrow here. And if I hover over that, I get a little tooltip that says up one level. And we can go back up to commercial spaces. We can go back up to spaces by function. Uh, if I choose a, another example, let's have a look at work results. So this is to do with activity. Uh, and then we get things like communication, concrete, conveying, earthworks, electrical, power generation, and so on. So if we drill into communications, then we get AV communications, core accounting, core management, data communications. And we can drill on down into those, and some of them have sub-levels, and some of them don't. Uh, so that gives you an example uh, of the categorization lists that are in there. And if you want to explore those, that's how you do it. So you need to be logged in as a manager. So this is generally aimed at manager level because it's due to do with organizing and categorizing resources and activities and people uh, within the Flow360 solution. So in order to apply a category to something, let's just have a look at how we do that in general, first of all. So let me go through to um, a room in Flow360, and let's suppose we want to categorize this space according to its current space usage, how the room is used. So if I go to the Details tab, a sub-tab that I have available here is Categories. And many of you will probably familiar, be familiar with the custom data uh, that we can add to resources. And obviously, if I click on Add a new custom data item, I can do things like uh, adding a manufacturer name. Or um, I can even use things like space usage or space category. And, and these are setting up custom tags, effectively. But the categorization schemes are a more structured way uh, of assigning categorization to things. So if I go to the Categories tab and click on the little plus button, I can now decide which categorization scheme I want to work with. 
So in this case, for categorizing resources, I have the choice of omniclass. Uh, the SOC is the standard occupational classification or uniclass. So if we go for omniclass and we go to spaces by function, because we're talking about categorizing a room, um, we can then pick up one of these options and say, well, you know, it, it is, it's a commercial space or it's a circulation space or it's a facility service space. or um, We can choose a categorization from that. Uh, so if we chose care spaces, for instance, then we can choose a subcategory from there, child care spaces. Um, and, you know, then we might say, well, it's a playroom. Uh, and if we hit confirm on that, then we've categorized room 105 uh, in this particular building as that type of space. And we can then use the categories to search for things. So if I go back to my, uh, if I go to my list view and I click on the find button, in fact, let's just refresh my list. Let's just find all, um, all rooms for a minute. So I've got a complete list here and I click on the find button to do a search. In the search filters, I've also got a tab that says category and I can do exactly the same thing. And you can see here, it also pops in the user option. So if I've categorized something using a user specified list, then I could also search by that. But if I go Omniclass spaces by function, and I go to care spaces and I hit confirm, it finds me that one space. Obviously, if I went down another level, then it allows me to refine that and I can find other spaces that are more specific. So I can find all spaces that are care spaces, or I can find all spaces that are um, that sort of play care space that's within the care spaces main category. So that is how the categorization works uh, in principle. And it's a, it's a very structured, hierarchical way of organizing data. Up until now, with help desk issues, the options we had available, if I go to start a new issue, and this will be familiar territory to you, is that we can select the issue type clearly. So I can say, well, it's a premises issue. Um, and then typically we might have work type and a category list one and a category list two option. And in my manager preferences, I can specify what those lists are going to show me. So in this case, I have some options here. Uh, and I have some different options on the list too, and they're not related. Um, and the work type drop down is a general work type option. So I can select here joinery work. And some of you will know that one of the things you can do when you set up teams of uh, teams that are your internal workforce is that you can assign work types to a team. Uh, or and remember that a team can just be uh, a single individual and by doing that you can then follow through on the automatic targeting of issues so by saying it's joinery it's automatically going to target that at the joinery team if i say it's electrical it's going to target it at the electricians so that's what we have currently and that's what's always been there uh what we've extended into now is being able to use categorization lists as a way of categorizing the issues and also targeting issues based on specific categories. And that's an alternative way of dealing with this, uh, these options that are already there. So work type cat list one, cat list two, we can change those and we can say, actually, what I want to do for my service area is use some linked categories here that allow me to use a more specific listing. Uh, and I think we may have an example of that. If I go to the IT services on my demo site, you can see here that the labels against these three fields have changed. It now says category, subcat one, subcat two. And I've got this little graphic on the right hand side that links those things together. So this is just telling you what you're looking at now is linked categories. And I can now do things like saying, well, OK, this is an IT request, but it's an access request. And specifically, it's ISAMs.
and have a look at what is happening up here as well. So it's also picking up these categories and putting those into the summary line if the summary line is currently empty. So in order to save some time when people are logging requests, one of the things you can do is set up your category list so that essentially by selecting a category and a subcategory and maybe even a subcategory too, you're actually specifying what the summary of the request is and you don't have to type anything else in there. You still have the details box so you can add additional information if you need to. Uh, but supposing this is okay, so I need ISAMs, I need access uh, to ISAMs, please. Uh, the actual location is irrelevant because this is a request from a person. So I can simply say not, not relevant to specify the location. This is just to do with a request for an individual. Um, when do I need this by? Well, you know, by next Monday would be great. Um, and we'll hit confirm on that. So that then logs that as a service request for the IT team. Um, and you can see down here on the, on the request that it's been targeted at Julian Spring, who's in charge of IT. And have a look here what's happened. So on the help desk issue record itself, it also says category subcat one, subcat two in place of what we have typically had up until now, which would have been work type and cat list one, cat list two, which are independent of each other. Now, how does all of that happen? How do we set that up? Let's have a look at some manager preferences because you will maybe have twigged, if I go back and we start one again, that by selecting a premises issue, I'm still seeing work type, cat list one, cat list two. As soon as I switch to ICT service, I get category, subcat one, subcat two, and they're linked. Now that's because the IT service manager has said, I want my issues to use linked categorizations rather than the standard independent work type and then separately list one, list two. And that's set up in the manager preferences. So I'm logged in as Tim. I'm the premises manager, so I'm not the IT service manager. If I go, go to my preferences and I select the, first of all, let's just select the general help desk tab. Now, these are primary manager help desk preferences. And we've done a little bit of restructuring of the preferences options uh, on the help desk tab and also on the services tab to separate things out and make it a little bit clearer as to which setting belongs in which category. Uh, and you can see here that we've got a, a, a whole section that says categories and work types. And as the main primary manager, I have some general options here, and these options will be the fallback if a service manager has not set their own preferences up independently. So as a primary manager on the site, I can say, well, this is how I want the system to operate in general. And then a specific service area manager like IT or catering or cleaning or grounds, um, they could come into their own preference area and say, yeah, but for my service area, I want it to work this way. And they can override the primary manager setting and that's fine. The primary manager setting always is there as a fallback where nothing else specific has been set by a different service area manager. So I have some basic options here, you know, hide work type category option on the new help desk issue form. This only applies to general users. So we can reduce the complexity of the form a little bit for general staff users by dropping off some options if we don't need them to use it. And we also have a general option here that the work type or category is required, yes or no. Uh, that's quite important because if you're using the team setups and the work type or category remits for the teams um, and you want issues to be targeted according to those remits, then of course you need, uh, you might want to specify that the work type or category is actually required and, and not allow people to log issues without specifying that. But if we have a look now at the services tab, we have some new options in here. And particularly, I want to draw your attention again to the categories and work types settings here 
And I want to look at this one in particular, which is link help desk issue type and categorization lists. Um, that was the key thing. So at the moment, as the primary manager, and I'm also the uh, primary help desk and premises manager, it currently says no. So I'm not linking the issue type and categorization lists together. And therefore, in the help desk, when I or another member of staff selects a general premises issue as the issue type, what I'm going to see is work type and then cat list one, cat list two as the options on those drop downs. However, if I say I want to link these things together, let's just make that one setting change and go back and have a look at what's happened. So if we go back now to the help desk and I select premises as the issue type, I've now got category subcat one, subcat two, but I have nothing here. There's no list set up. So I now need to look at how do I set up a list so that when I select premises as the issue type, I then get some options in the category and subcat one and subcat two listings. And in order to do that, I need to go back to my manager preferences and I need to go back to the category lists option in my preferences. And I need to create a new list that is going to be linked to premises as an issue type. So let's do that. At the moment, I don't have that option there uh, for, for my set of premises. And I'm going to now create a new list. So I have a, a little button here that says create new list. It's got a list with a plus next to it. And I have some options here. I could either simply name a new list and just start creating a list from, from scratch. But it says here to start a new list based on an existing issue type, click select. And that's what I need to do. So I need to click select. And now from this drop down, I select the issue type that I want to link my new categorizations to, and I'm going to say premises. So I'm going to click on premises and say create, and that is putting together a new categorization list based on the issue type premises. And I can now start adding items to this categorization. And in order to do that, I need to click the little button here, which says add a new item or subcategory for this list. And let's just set a few up. So Let's supposing we say, well, heating is an obvious one, and let's add lighting. You know, these are sort of general premises issues, areas, power, uh, and, and maybe one more just to cover sort of general fabric of the building issues. So that sets up my top level. So if I go back now to start logging a new issue, Let's have a look at what's happening here. Uh, I select premises, and I now get fabric, heating, lighting, power. I now get those four top level categories to choose from. But of course, I get no subcategory one or subcategory two because I didn't set those up. So let's just drop back into my preferences for a minute, go back to my category lists, pick up my premises list here. Uh, and note that it tells me here in the in the little yellow box who the owner of the list is, because an individual will be responsible for setting up a specific list. And when other people, other managers are looking at the categorization lists that are in the solution, uh, it's useful for them to understand who is the owner of this list, who set it up. So let's have a look, for instance, let's drill down into heating and add some subcategories for the heating category. So if I click the little target button for heating, currently I have no subcategories listed. I select the little add new item subcategory button. And let's put in some sort of fairly obvious things. You know, heating not working. Okay. Uh, so we'll put that one in as one choice. Um, and maybe we want to allow people to say, well, it's too hot um, or it's too cold. So let's just add in too cold as well. Uh, yeah, these are these are just sort of simple things. So let's go back, start logging a new issue again. And again, I can say premises and I can say heating. And now I get heating not working, too cold. Let's say it's too cold. Uh, 
Uh, and so that's now put that in the summary. It says premises issue, heating too cold. And in this case, obviously, it would be useful to specify, is it generally or is it, you know, let's say it's in the Geo6 office. So Geo6 office, heating too cold. I haven't had to type anything in here. I've just made a selection from the category and subcat lists, and I'll hit confirm. And that logs the new issue. It assigns it, in this case, to the general maintenance manager. Um, and heating too cold is clearly identified in the category and subcategory. It's also, of course, brought that information through onto the summary line here. And had I added further details, they would, of course, be listed in the details field. So having added those categories to this issue, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we also have a categories tab now on the help desk issue record. And if I click on the categories tab, you'll see that it's actually set up a categorization based on what was allocated here. So it does that automatically in the background. I can, if I want to, I can manually add additional categorizations to this issue. Now, most of the time, you're not going to want to do this, but occasionally it might be useful. So you might say, well, OK, it's a, it's a user thing and it is a premises issue. And, you know, I'll pick up another one that's to do with environment. And I can add a second categorization. Uh, to this particular issue. So in the same way as before, when we were looking at using the search functions then to find things by categorization, uh, if we look at the find options for help desk issues, we can also uh, search by categorization. So I can say, well, it's, you know, it's this one and it's this one and it was the environment thing and I need to find those issues and it's found that one issue for me. We can also then work on producing reports and sub-summary reports that list and organize things according to categories and subcategories so that you can review a set of active issues and say, okay, you know, give me a report output that does all of that. Uh, let's say we bring up all of our active issues and I go to my report options and I say, uh, events, oh, we haven't got that set up. Uh, I still need to do that in the demo, sorry. Uh, it's available in the live solution already. You'll find an events by category, help desk issues by category option, and that will allow us to view those in report output. We'll have a look at those in a little bit more detail in another session. So let's just recap quickly. Each service area manager, independently of each other, can decide for themselves whether they want categorizations to be linked in this way when people are allocating new help desk issues. So let's just go back to putting in a, a new issue again and just see what's there. So if I select failure, all of this now, all of these general premises things are governed by the primary manager preference, which says use categorization lists because that's the preference that I set. Now, at the moment, if I select failure as the option, there's nothing set up for failure because I haven't defined a list for that. But we know that if I come down to premises, we have that categorization list to choose from. So I can say fabric or heating or lighting or power. And if I select heating, I know that I've got additional options like heating not working and so on. We know also that IT uh, set up to use categorization lists. So we have things like access requests and ISAMs and Office 365 for, uh, for those sorts of things. And if we go to uh, cleaning services, however, you can see that the cleaning service manager said, no, I'm not setting up category lists. I don't need them. Uh, we're just this is just a basic cleaning service request. But then we have some additional options in here that are based on work types. And these are options that are at the system level in Flow 360 that are additional cleaning services choices. Uh, so there are two very distinct ways of organizing how issues can be categorized when they come in and indeed how they can be targeted. And let's have a look at the targeting for a minute. If I go to my manager home um, and I look at my employees tab and then my teams tab, and I look, say, at the general maintenance team, 
I have a tab here that says help desk work type remits. And we've got three just general work types set up. If I want to add some targeting that's based on a categorization list, I can now do that. So I can click on the little plus button, add new team remit, yep, and then it says simple work type or categories. Uh, and I can say, that it then says select work type for team and click confirm or click categories to select from a categorization list. So let's say we go to categories and it's a user categorization I'm interested in and it's my premises issue that I set up and it's to do with heating and it's to do with heating not working. Very specifically, so I'm saying very specifically, heating and the subcategory heating not working is a remit for the general maintenance team. And if I click confirm, that now gets listed in here. So let's have a look what impact that has if I start logging a new issue. So premises, and I've got my various subcategories. So where is, where is it being targeted right now? General team, Tim Jones general team. If I say fabric, still. Tim Jones general team. If I say heating, now it switches to general maintenance. Heating not working, switches to general maintenance. So by specifying categories and subcategories, I can target these issues very precisely at a particular individual or team based on the categorization that is used there. If I had a different team set up to receive uh, the too cold option, for instance, and I then selected too cold, then it would go to that other team instead uh, of the one it's uh, targeted at at the moment. I just want to remind you as well that there are other controls in the preferences that govern things like whether or not the work type and subcat options are shown at all. Um, and let's just go back into the preferences and review those. So I need to go into my manager preferences and look at the services tab. And I'm coming back again to this categories and work types subsection of the preferences setups. And I just want to show you a couple of things here that where things are linked together. So I've said I want uh, help desk issue type and categorizations lists linked. And I'm now, because I've said that, I'm now actually locked out of some of these other settings. I can't select that and change it. I can't select that and change it because it would not be appropriate. Having said that I want them linked, it would then not be appropriate to hide the category option on the form. So the hide category option is no longer a choice because I've said I want to use links. Uh, however, if I set use links off, then I can say, yeah, well, I don't want the category work. I don't want the work type option showing at all. Um, and I nor do I want the um, nor do I want the categorization lists to show. And, and this these affect general users only. So this won't change the settings for managers or client admin or members of your internal teams. It's got a little asterisk at the end, those two. And if we check up here, um, it will say somewhere uh, that that applies to general users only. We've got this little label here. So anything with a single asterisk applies to general users only. So that's normal, just general members of the academic staff, typically, where you want to be able to simplify the form as much as possible. So where you're not wanting to link stuff according to categorization lists, uh, then you can choose to hide those options. But if I go back and now and say yes to that, then it switches those fields over. Then it says, OK, you've said you want to link them. That means we have to show the category list options. That means we can't hide the main category option. We need to have those available. So there's, there's some linking mechanisms that are play here in the preferences setups that prevent you basically from setting something that is <laughs> that, that cannot work. The, the first option here, help desk work type slash category is required. That's optional for both. Um, so you can say, absolutely, I need people to put that in. And, it, uh, and if we say yes to that, let's just come out of that for a minute. Let's say yes to that. And we go back in here and we say new help desk issue request. Uh, and now we can see, you know, premises, for instance, Work type is now lit up in red. That means 
I must select a work type because I've said that's a requirement. If I go to ICT service, the category option is not lit up in red, so this is now optional. So again, you see how these settings are governed by each service area manager's preferences independently, with the primary manager having the fallback position where the service area manager has not set up anything specific. And just a reminder, where do you find who those service area managers are? We'll go back to the main site record. We go to the personnel tab and we look for these columns. So here we've got IT and that's Julian Spring. Here we've got C for catering and that's uh, June Williams and so on. And we've got housekeeping and we've got cleaning and we've got general maintenance and porting. We've got grounds. Uh, so we can we have all of these different area managers if we have them set up in the personnel tab and in these cases for these service areas then it is these specified individuals who would need to set their individual preferences the way they want them to work for their service area. If they don't set up anything specific then of course the general preference that's applied by the primary manager, in this case Tim Jones here, he's the primary manager, also the primary help list manager for all other premises issues, then those preferences are the ones that apply. So I hope that's, uh, that's given you a little bit of an insight in, in, into what we've added there. Uh, we have made some additions to the user guide that, that will help guide you through some of what we've been talking about today. But of course, if you have any questions, please do get in touch, email support at flow360.net and we will get back to you. And of course, we can discuss things with you and go through things again or go through things that are relevant to your specific circumstance uh, to advise how best to set it up. That's it for today. So thank you for your time. Uh, we will, of course, be posting this on our YouTube channel so that people can review this session and make it available to other people as as appropriate. Uh, but that's it for now. So I will say goodbye and hopefully see you next time.